From dining to living to wherever, we help give confused rooms new direction. This is the Confused Room Podcast. This is the Confused Room Podcast. Thank you for listening, whatever platform it is, iTunes or Apple Podcasts, as it's called now, Stitcher, uh, iHeart, whatever it may be. Please press subscribe. Leave us some stars, some reviews. It helps us uh, grow in the rankings. And thank you for joining us. Thank you for watching. If you're watching the the video version of this, as we do it live every single Thursday on Facebook uh, or uh, just post it out there on YouTube uh, uh, three times a week, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday is when the show comes out. I'm Tony Bruschi. That's Jenny Bruschi. Hi. And how are you this fine day? I'm doing okay. How are you? I'm doing well. Um, How are your phalanges? They're healing. (laughs) I'm down. Well, I had one band-aid already fall off. I'm down to two band-aids. I was at seven earlier this week. And uh, medicated cream that the doctor gave me and changing bandages three times a day. Was it a balm? Yeah, I guess. Who told you to use a balm? Did you, I tell you to use a balm? You did. Jerry, did you I told you to use a balm? But it's a Seinfeld reference. I had to go to the doctor to get this particular one for burns, so. Is that why you've been sitting like this I, the whole night we've been recording? I just kind of noticed you've been kind of like. I'm kind of embarrassed about it. My hands hurt. It's not fun. So. So should we tell the cautionary tale? That will be on next week's episode of the program. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can talk about this. So, word to the wise, not everything you see on YouTube is obviously a good idea. Especially if you don't know what you're doing. And a lot of times, I will YouTube watch several YouTube videos before I do a project to see the general direction of how something should be done. Mm-hmm. Um, I had never worked with cement especially lime cement. Um, This was actually a lime mortar to go between some stone veneer that we put on a fireplace, which you guys will see next week. So you should have gone for the lemon lime, not just the lime. Shut up. (laughs) I'd hit you, but my hands hurt. So anyway, so the, the method I saw, and I won't list what video I watched, but the method I saw, they were smearing this on, in a way to really fill the joints in between the stones. I thought, oh, okay, that's kind of something I would do anyway because I'm very much use my hands to get it just the way I want. They did not have protection on their hands, so I didn't think anything of it. I thought, oh, this, you know, I've done tile work, I've done grout, you know, no big deal. You definitely want to use gloves, the right kind of gloves, mm-hmm. which are probably in the masonry area yeah. at your big box store. Because you did have gloves. I, I will say that. After I did a few times, I thought, mm-hmm. you know, this is really rough. So I went and got my good old work mm-hmm. gloves, you know, that have the knuckle protective patches and stuff. But they were not um, impervious, meaning that the, the liquid where I was dipping my hands repeatedly to get the sponge wet to wipe off the excess mortar, my gloves were soaked. Mm-hmm. And my hands were in my gloves, and it was for hours that it was like this. And when we took the gloves off, pieces of my fingers had been eaten away by the, I guess it's the alkaloid or whatever it is in the cement. Cement um, gremlins is what I call it. First and second degree burns, kids. So... Just saying, make sure you have the right protection when working with cement. Yeah, it's not fun. No, it's not fun. You had your your pinkies, but I had my whole hands, and, yeah. and my skin's still extremely dry and, like, cracks. So yeah. on top of the burns, I've got these really bad cracks and everything. But it's getting better, but, like, all on the top of my fingers here, you can't really see it. I can't even wear my rings. Because uh, the burns have to heal. Fun times. Adventures in cement. Yeah, adventures in cement. So. It did turn out lovely, though. Yeah, I will say it's almost <laughs> worth it. Um, you didn't lose any fingers. No, so, no. It, it's yeah. not like it chopped something off. It was just yeah. an unexpected burn. And burns hurt. Yeah. And when you don't feel well because of injuries, you don't sleep well. So it's not been a, a fun time at our house. I don't like Googling medical things because inevitably you'll find worst case scenario mm-hmm. no matter what you do uh, if you click enough. 
and especially because we were, we were discovering this at like eleven o'clock at night. It's like everything said seek yeah. metal, medical attention immediately. Yeah, <laughs> it's like because it may still have debris in there. Yeah. that's going to continue yeah. to eat your fingers. Yeah, so we called the uh, the like the nurse on call thing through our insurance, and they were like. You'll probably be okay. Go to the walk-in in the morning. Rinse it off. Vinegar. It'll neutralize because it's a pH level thing is what it changes. And, and that yeah. burns like something I'm not going to yeah. say. Yeah, but it also stopped it as well. It did, um, but yeah. that burned worse than yeah. the burn. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, so we learned our lesson on uh, that. We need better gloves and the correct type of gloves. So use yes. the correct type of gloves. When working with any sort of concrete product, I can guarantee someone will hear this and you will have saved them burned hands. Well, I hope so. I hope so. And if you don't know if it's the right kind of gloves, call the manufacturer on the bag and ask yeah. what kind of gloves you need. Mm -hmm. I think the cat peed on our bag of concrete. That's probably not what caused the burn. <laughs> I just remember bringing a bag of it in to mix into the tub. And there was like... Cat pee on the side. Bubbles had peed on it. Bubbles had peed on it. That's the whole, it was cat pee mixed with cement equals toxic product. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Super acidic at that point. But next week you guys will see what we literally shed blood, sweat, and tears over. Because yeah. Because I did cry a little. I'm not a big crier, but this effing hurt a lot. So I cried. When? I didn't know that. Then I'm stronger than you think I am. What do you mean? I mean, no, I, I, I cried because I started sure. freaking out when everything was saying seek oh, yeah. medical attention oh, no. immediately, yep, yep, and yep, it's yep. midnight. Yep. And no, like, I remember I was there. Yep. I'm like, am I going to have to go to the ER over this because yep. I was afraid I'm going to wake up? And yeah, I was more nervous. It was the anything. anxiety. It was, I thought you meant you were crying like when you had the. You, you were no. you were kind of getting the tears because you were nervous about what. I was how bad afraid it was, was yeah. going to get worse. Yep. Okay, enough of that. I'm trying to break into some sort of song here, like cry a little. I, I can't think of how it goes. No. Anyway, I'm, I'm failing on the songs. Um, okay, so we've got an office space on this episode. does not involve concrete. That's next week, but yeah. now you know. Uh, an office space that uh, we're going to be working on, this space is looking like this. It kind of has, um, I almost want to call it like golf uh, pro shop carpet <laughs> just because it's kind of it's it's a greenish type hue too it, it, right. uh, it's got an older metal desk it kind of reminds me of my dad's desk that yeah. you said you like that you I want do like your dad's uh, desk. someday uh, and then it's got the uh, the kind of red oak cabinetry all around it lots of just lots of office a big bulky office equipment where and also the big bulky flat screen TV that's a thick flat screen TV with a very, you know, bulky mount. Look at that mount. It's supporting yeah. top and bottom. This That's would have been old school. This would have been great in ninety five. Yeah. This would have been everything state of the art. This is wonderful. Um but uh, it's not nineteen ninety five. Um so what, twenty three years later? Mm -hmm. Um it's it's probably time for a bit of an update in here. Um, so that's what we're going to do on uh, on this space here. If you could any, add anything into your office uh, with space not being an issue, uh, Jenny, what exactly would you add into your office? Well, I'm already planning on what I'm going to add into my office. A big rock wall that you no. make yourself? I'm not doing any masonry for a long time. Um, but I am wanting to add beams. Believe it or not, we are in a basement office, but I have tall enough ceilings I can add some sh shallow beams to mm -hmm. it. And I want to add shutters to my windows to provide some insulation at night. How? How? What? Shutters. Or like like up and down, like shutters, like in my office type shutters? Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought, like, you, th I thought you meant like fold. No, like, fold. I'm like window treatment shutters okay. that are louvered. And that way sure. I can close them at night and it'll help keep some of the, the heat in here. Because everybody that's got a basement and mm -hmm. uses their basement, they know that there's a difference between the upstairs temp and the downstairs sure. temp. Luckily, we live in an area where we only have a few days of the year where it's like, oh, God, it is cold down I know, here. But, but I when mean, it is, it is. I'm a Texas girl, and I don't like the cold at yeah. all. So. so you need one of those uh, uh, door snakes that uh, 
are filled with uh, cotton or whatever. And it, How it am I going to use that on my whole window? <laughs> you get a lot of them. You, you just link the snakes together. Okay. That's what you do with real snakes when you uh, use them. for. <laughs> I was afraid when you lifted up that um, pallet today that there was probably going to be a oh, snake under there. Oh, God. <laughs> But I didn't want to tell you. <laughs> you were just hoping. <laughs> no, I was not hoping. I was hoping there was not going to be one under there, but I was back. Did you notice? I was back when you... Why didn't you say, like, hey, be careful, there's not a snake under there? Because I thought you would think of that. You were already thinking of it, and I was doing it. Because if I had said that, you would have squealed and jumped back, and then I'd be the one lifting up the pallet. <laughs> Right? No, no, no. That's how that I would. Shit no, goes. I just would have looked more before I just reached my hands in there and moved it, because <laughs> I didn't even even think of that. I know it's February, but if you can hear the frogs outside, which we can here in the Ozarks, <laughs> mm-hmm. that means other things are coming out. Too. It means snake season is upon us, so. everybody. Our slithery little friends are back. So yeah, that would have been funny though. It would, yeah. For you. I've already been scarred in the driveway several times by snakes. I know. They keep coming for me. <laughs> they won't stop. But were you not disturbed by the snakes? Not that we've done our homework and we know the yeah. most of the ones we encounter are actually ones that keep rodents away. Yeah, they're normally pretty friendly. They're not, like, going to chase you around and bite you. What I was most disturbed by was the copperhead that we did find because I reached my hand right by it and had no idea. It just blended right in with the rocks. Thank God we put mulch there. So now we'll see if there's a snake. Yeah. Uh, if that uh, ever occurs. So office space, that's the space we're working on. Again, let's go back to that. Um, you want, uh, let's do your space first. Okay, sure. Okay, let's do your space again. This is the before, and if you want to see the before and after pictures, confusedroom.com uh, is the website to go to to check it all out. You ready? Okay. Here is Jenny's office space. All right, so with this, we were told it was going to be sort of a creative space. And um, I like to add texture to any room, so I did a accent wall in the back with red brick but i actually went above and beyond on the red and painted it red as well did kind of a soft seafoam green on the walls and did a uh, wood look material since this is actually below grade you can't really do hardwood so i went with like a vinyl wide plank in a almost ebony color so it's it shows the wood green but it's mainly black um i went with open shelves that are glass and metal on the brick wall to not only let the brick wall show through, but also to still have some functional storage. The fun thing that I wanted to do is add this vintage Coca-Cola machine, which I thought would be a fun addition to any office, and it ties in with the red. And then the artwork that we've used are just prints of skylines of prominent cities here in the U.S., but also um, it added a lot of fun color and under this big window I put two benches side by side that were upholstered so that you could actually use that like a window seat because I do some of my best thinking when I'm not at my desk so I thought also with a desk you have a workspace for working on your computer but being in the creative kind of industry it's also nice to have a table where you can spread out your ideas and look at everything you know all together uh, Mandy says, is that a big cork board? It is. It is a big cork board because I like to be able to hang ideas and, and important notes and things up. Dave says, I like the color. Thank you. I like the color on the brick, too. That's pretty bold. I mean, it's like it's taking the red brick and going extreme with it. The inspiration was the Coca-Cola machine. Okay. Yeah. So I wanted to tie it both ends of the room. Sure. I like that. I like that a lot. And I love the the retro Coca-Cola machine. You know, it's, it's funny. You see... You might go into almost any antique store in America right now, and you will find a Coca-Cola cooler, machine, something mm-hmm. of that, that era. And I think the thought process is a lot of times like, oh, a lot of people really want them. And you have collectors who do have like their Coca-Cola rooms and stuff, but I'm seeing more and more of them sit. Sure. Um, where it's like, used to go into the store like, oh, that'll be gone next time I'm here. Three months, five months later, it's still there. Um, and I think, I'm guessing there's a lot of thought of like, well, that's really neat, but where on earth do I put this thing? Right. What other applications would you have for uh, 
a commercial machine like that? I would, in most cases, it's going to cost way more than it's probably worth to get it functioning sure, again. So sure. I would actually do the old Jenny junk and with Jenny thing, and I would gut it and repurpose the outside of it mm -hmm. as something else, probably some sort of, you know, storage or cabinetry mm -hmm. or see if you could somehow make it into a refrigerator unit. You could, if you gutted the whole thing, you could actually just kind of create a pedestal in there mm -hmm. and just mount like a, a, a college dorm fridge on the inside. Yeah. You know, open up the door, get the door so it opens easily, um, which would probably be the addition of some hardware, like a handle and keep it unlocked um, to open it up. And really you could have a second use for it. But yeah, you're right. I mean, to keep it functional. Right. They will be very, mm -hmm. very pricey. It's like the old pinball machines. I love seeing those at the antique stores, and I go, oh, I wish I had one. But I've also looked up the prices on just how to get them serviced and repaired, and there's so few people who know how to do it because it's like a savant art yeah. almost. Um, and then to find someone, it's, it's very difficult. And number one, the price to get one most of the time, more than the, it should be. Mm-hmm. Um, for the condition that they're in. But if you find one that is kind of beat up and you go, oh, this is a fixer-upper project, unless you really know your retro engineering um, and uh, retro electronics and how some of those things functioned, and I, don't, I do not, no. I don't even think I could begin to jump into that. Um, I was just like, yeah, no, I don't think so. No. But, but if you could find it like, as a coffee table, like an old pinball that top as a fun. table... That would be very fun. That would be a neat, mm -hmm. a neat thing. I, what I want to get sometime is uh, they they have this thing called virtual pinball now, and it's like how they have the 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 main arcade machines that run old video games, and we we play with that. Um, but this is it's it's literally you you put a, a TV down in a cabinet, and then you have another TV up on the top, and it emulates the full table on TV screens. And it's it's hooked into a computer and then buttons and it you press a button and it flips changes a table to whatever table you want it to be. Wow. It looks fairly a little complicated in the programming end, but it's like that may be a project I embark on at some point and it takes some time to figure out. But it looks neat. I have no idea where I would put it, what I would do <laughs> with it. I would not buy one pre-made because they're very expensive. But if you were to do it from the ground up with some wood, uh, some relatively inexpensive television sets which you can get now um you know you could probably get it done for under 500 bucks as opposed to like 5000 which is what if you're buying it you know ready to go but i don't know i think it'd be kind of fun for a, a space especially like an office space sure so okay uh my office space let me pull that up over here okay ready Okay, for my office space, I kind of went with a uh, retro creative feel. The big thing I wanted in here was uh, the old school blackboard. Sometimes myself, having a big blackboard in view of my desk with ideas all over it can be a big help. So that's what I put here. But with a simple gray wooden desk placed in the center of the room with plenty of space on all sides to give uh, space and a great view of all the elements of the room from the windows to the blackboard. Put it in an oversized 60s modern style red sofa in the back corner of the room and accented it with a starburst clock, some potted plants above it, and wooden storage shelves off to the side. Accented the forward facing left wall with outdoor cedar wood shake shingles for a creative kind of a fun vibe, something different. Added the turn of the century telephone and coat rack to the entry and an accent table with the bright flowering plants being lit by mid-century pendant lighting uh, off to the side right as you walk into the office space. Tell me about your flooring. My flooring? Concrete. Okay, that's what I thought, but I couldn't tell from the drawing if it was concrete or if it was gray carpet. It's concrete, and I, you're right. I did not even add that into my description. I failed on that part. But uh, that concrete flooring, I thought, that's kind of fun. I mean, this is supposed to be a creative space. I was really just trying to go with um, focusing your ideas, your energies in certain areas and not having too many ways to get distracted, mm -hmm. but having the few distraction points in the office being really different, yeah. being really fun, like with, with the, the siding there, the, the shaker shingles. I thought, I, I, I've seen that recently on something and I was like, 
That's neat. I like that idea for in indoors. Uh-huh. Um, not every room would that fit in, but the request on the office space was something creative, something kind of fun, something kind of interesting. Um, and I thought, that's good. I like that. You know, we see a lot of industrial, you know, metal tubing, plumbing tubing, things of that nature use. Um, I, I like outdoors. And yeah. I, I thought that really kind of gave it a, a bit of an outdoor feel. That's a nice inspiration to think outside the box. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So that's kind of where I went with that. And I think one of the biggest things you and I both did is we didn't over fill these rooms with accessories because I think sometimes you have too much going on in a room. It makes it harder to think. I agree. Why is it important to be comfortable in an office space? That's one of the questions I had. I, because you have to be yeah. able to not be distracted by everything. And I know you and I have distraction issues. Sure. So I try and, you know, have, I like to have my office decorated, but it's not overflowing. There's mm-hmm. not pictures of things everywhere. It's yeah. just real simple. It's also easier to keep clean. And I think that's that, to me, makes it easier for me to come in and relax and think about what I need to think about. Yeah, I agree. I very much uh, agree. Uh, I had one more question that I was thinking of for this episode. Office smells. Uh-huh. Places that you've worked at. Not your office now. Not okay. not like, I like this candle, but more so. Uh, places that you've been employed or places that you've been that have been workplaces, whether you just stepped in them for a short period of time or not. What was the worst office smell you've ever endured? Huh? I don't know that I have one. And really? I, I know that's not a funny answer, but I, I've been blessed with any place I worked besides from, you know, worked at home. Mm-hmm. I didn't have anything around that. It, it wasn't like a musty, moldy. No. Any the, the worst, I guess, is maybe when I'd have to go out to the warehouse when I worked for the, the large flooring company. Because sure. sometimes they would have things out there that would reek like the large rolls of rubber gym flooring and things like mm-hmm. that. But that was never where my desk was, so it wasn't a problem. Now, coworkers and their choices of what they're going to eat at their desk, that's a different story, but it wasn't ever a environment issue. Okay. It was an idiot issue. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, don't eat that shit. Don't eat it? that. Or have a little consideration. Uh, have, don't have the three microwave burritos. Uh, no, because uh, we're all going to smell that twice. Yeah. So. yeah. I would say, uh, for me, it was the, the powder that would be put down on the floor. I don't know if it's a disinfectant powder. I don't know what the hell it's supposed to do. But it would be... Sometimes commercial cleaners will put that down. And Is then, that like the barf powder? Yes, it's very, yes. It, it's horrible. <laughs> and and I remember the folks who would clean the radio station, my first radio station, I knew that they cleaned like maybe once a week, um, but they went through and they powdered the floors. I mean, it's not even, it wasn't really that dirty. I mean, no. but they did that and then they vacuumed and supposedly the vacuum is supposed to, I think, get it all up. It, it didn't. Um, and then you have that smell, which I think most of us remember from like elementary school mm-hmm. when somebody yacked on the carpet and then the teacher, you know, cleaned it up and then put the powder shit down. And sometimes the powder stuff smelled worse than the yak. Yeah. And, and it was just, oh my God. But this was just put all over the office with no yak. It's that association though. Of, yeah. It's, it smells like had that, yeah. You know. The dumb kid threw up in the corner kind of <laughs> smell. The dumb kid threw up in the <laughs> There's always one. Uh, it's it's one of those things where it's like, maybe without that association, I wouldn't have gotten so sick by it. But I swear, you know, you're you're having to go on the air. And I remember there'd be like one day every two weeks, I'm sitting there in the studio and I'm just like choking oh. as I'm about to like turn the mic on and go on. And it's like, Oh God. And, and it, it just gave me a stomach ache and I just, I had to constantly walk outside and get fresh air and Oh God. Only place that did it was there. I don't know why they did it. I don't, I don't know. Maybe there was like a throw up party in the morning once a week. I was unaware of that. I wasn't there at the time. And then they just, Oh, we got to clean up from the throw up party. Throw up party. 
And then we know what happens at radio stations. Uh, all right, that wraps up the, this uh, episode of Confused Room. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for uh, commenting online. Maddie says she uh, we have whiteboards all over our house. Love the cork, the black, and the whiteboard ideas. Yeah, they're so, a good thing. Thanks for uh, for uh, weighing in, everybody on uh, on uh, Facebook. Stick around on Facebook. There's another episode coming. Uh, if you're uh, listening to this, thank you guys for listening. Another episode again uh, tomorrow. Every single Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, new episodes of Confused Room on your favorite podcast platform. Please press subscribe and uh, share this with a friend. Let people know that we exist. Uh, that helps us grow the show. Until next time, for Jenny Bruski, I'm Tony Bruski. Thanks for listening to another episode of Confused Room.